Pet Health Coach, and with me today is Maggie Shellhammer, one of our Holistic Pet Health Coach graduates of the certification program. And I am so happy she is able to join today. Uh, Maggie has been in the animal world for quite some time. She's a devoted pug mom and has been working as a certified dog trainer in Columbus. Also, she's worked in facilities with offering boarding, grooming, training, and veterinary services in Houston, Texas. And then Maggie decided to get a certification for grooming in Charleston, South Carolina, my hometown in 2012, and uh, then ended up moving to Northeast Ohio, where she currently resides, and opened a grooming shop there. And throughout her career, Maggie has seen lots and lots of dogs with health issues and just you know, I can't, I know you must be as frustrated as I am. You see them come in happy young dogs and then two to three years older, they're looking old and sad. Um, so that's, I mean, that's heartbreaking. So Maggie, welcome. Um, and we've Thank got you. a couple of, got a couple of folks on with us. Um, so Lisa, welcome. Where are you in Florida? And anybody else that wants to pop in where they're hanging out from would be awesome. But Maggie, what prompted you to join the program? Um, well, I had a, a pug um, that lived to be 16, almost 17, despite all the terrible food and vaccinations and flea and tick medications and all the things. Um, she, she really hung in there, but it was, um, I don't know, five years, she was about, gosh, I'm terrible with numbers. She was probably 11 or 12 or so, and she was struggling to come up the stairs. And we found out she had degenerative disc disease. And um, by some miracle in town, in this small town that I live in, um, there was a vet practicing acupuncture. And so I went for it and, um, and at the time she was also having gastrointestinal issues and we were at the vet every few weeks to redo um, antibiotic or whatever it was and switched her food to high fiber food. And, um, and then, so we started the acupuncture and the GI issues just went away and it was awesome, but we were really there to help her get moving better. And so I kept doing that. I was I was really avid about going. I got to where I was going every two weeks, and um, I didn't know that there was anything else that I could be doing. And so I was just happy to have this acupuncture. And I think we definitely gave her a couple more years, got her moving. Um, but then at the very end of her life, I learned that there was this whole world of feeding dogs differently. Had never heard of it raw food, um, all those things. So, you know, once she was gone, like I didn't have time to try other things with her. And so when I was, she was gone, I waited a year and I was getting puppies. So I learned as much as I possibly could. And I thought I was doing everything right. My, I got the puppies and they were going through everything, you know, the skin, itchy skin, ears, um, I'm like, but I'm giving them the best that I know. And, and so I just kept digging and I kept hearing from more and more veterinarians about you could try this and you could try this. And then your program popped up, you know, now they're well into two years old, but once I started this program and started cooking their food, everything turned around and I was just, I was shocked and amazed, but now, you know, I realized that one thing doesn't work for everybody. And, um, and I also kind of kept throwing things at them. Like I would learn about supplements or different foods and things. And I'm like, but this is good for you. It, you should, you should be loving this. And, you know, they'd have an ear infection over it or something just, it's hard to learn on your own. And, and I would listen to these vets speak and like, I want that in my brain. I want to know how, how they know this stuff. And so I found a way to do it. Right on. And, and, and that's the thing is that 
watching you progress through the course was amazing. You kept picking up more stuff. You kept talking about the changes you were seeing in your own dogs. And, uh, you know, that was, this, that's been one of the most fun parts for me with this whole program is watching people get the knowledge, see, start to see changes in their own pets and then start to see changes in their friends' pets and in their early client pets. Um, so it's, that's been a marvelous thing to watch, to see everybody get happy, get their knowledge going. And I'm just going to share your page while we're chatting a little bit more, but pugs, <laughs> pugs are notoriously difficult because they do have a myriad of health problems. So it, you know, to get these guys healthy, get their skin issues under control, um, all of those, all of those common pug issues, it is just astonishing that they've responded. Um, yeah, and I love this. Um, so, you know, that that's exactly it. I mean, the logic in veterinary medicine right now about, you know, what's about food is just ridiculous uh, because what are we doing? We're feeding them basically processed byproducts. And Lisa, it looks like you're, you're, uh, we're preaching to the choir for you, but it just, uh, it's just crazy. I mean, it's, and that's a big part of why I started the course too, because it's, there are not enough holistic veterinarians out there to help as many people that need to be helped. And it, frankly, it's not cheap. Um, so to, I mean, when I was in brick and mortar practice, it just is what it is, but amazing that we have these abilities to offer acupuncture and uh, various therapies in the veterinary office. But my goal was to help teach people like you, Maggie, and you know other folks that have been advocates for pet health, how to do things at home, how to help that pet parent figure out what to do at home. So right on to that. So, right, and that's that's the best yeah. thing too is that that people don't know that they can take care of a lot of things on their own, and and I've heard a lot about how vets are just bogged down with they can't see everybody and they only have a few minutes to talk to them, and you know I just want to be part of that pet parents team, you know, like let's have a chat, what's going on? Let me offer you a few questions to ask your vet so that you can cut right to the chase, you know. Just something simple like that. I'm not exactly. a miracle worker. <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're all miracle workers in our in our own right, right? Um, and, and that's it. You know, it's just, this is the difficulty, at least saying the doctor's hands are tied to consult with long distance cases. But right. this, that's exactly it. Because coaches, holistic pet health coaches are not diagnosing, treating or prescribe we're helping that pet parent work through diagnoses that they may have received from a veterinarian, helping them understand what the blood work results are, um, and then what to do next by manipulating the diet, adding in supplements, and using some simple at-home tests like the uh, Glacier Peaks Life Stress Scan to get down to the root of the cause. So that's exactly right. And it's kind of sad too, because during COVID, the FDA relaxed the telemedicine regulations. And frankly, I don't know that they ever kind of, you know, get, got them more strict, but the AVMA um, is like trying to claw back telemedicine from the pet parent and the veterinarian, which I think is a great disservice because there's so much that can be done in a telephone consultation for these chronically ill pets. Um, yeah, and that's that's exactly it. Because you know, if you go to the doctor and you go to the vet, and they're like, "Oh, well, you know, okay, your dog's got stage two Irish kidney disease, and just feed it this bag of food, and we'll see what happens. We'll do something else when it gets worse." That's exactly it, Lisa. the The deal is to intervene before things get worse with modalities and treatments that we know work. So, and that's another thing yeah. that I don't I don't like um, hearing a lot of people say is that they got that prescription bag of dog food and they've been on it for years because there was never a follow up, never checked to see if it was working. 
and you know, they yeah. start having other issues all of a sudden. It's like, well, maybe you should come off of that food now and see, you know, see what's up. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. I mean, unfortunately, we know that protein limiting does make the kidney values look better on the piece of paper, but then we're, we're like taking away muscle mass from elderly pets. And that's the last thing we want to do because they're starting to develop arthritis and other health concerns. Right on. So, and for those of you watching, if you've got some questions, just pop them in the uh, box and we'll answer those as we go. Um, so what's the, what's the most fun you've had with your, with your own grooming clients? And you're, you're currently transitioning from grooming full-time into coaching as well as grooming. And the goal is to go into the uh, coaching as a as your sole business, but what's the most fun you've had with your grooming clients so far? Yeah, that is the hope. But um, you know, it's it's been a long ride with um, starting. It it's been 15 years ago, I think, that I started at the big pet store, and I I loved the girls that I worked with, and we. And it's it's stereotypical fishbowl. Like you've got this big window where everybody can see you where you're in the store and you've got a mirror on this side. And, you know, we just learned to live that way. And um, it was a it was a hard job. It was a fast paced, busy place. And um, but but you develop a little family with those people that you're in that fishbowl with. Um, and, but then when I moved back to Ohio, I started my own place where I've been working alone. And for the first few years, I think that was like a sigh of relief. Like it's so nice and quiet and I could just work with one dog at a time. Um, but the, the people that I've met and the relationships that we have, and, um, you know, I get to know the dogs and, and that's, that's one thing that I feel like if I wasn't so exhausted from grooming it would be really great if i could keep doing it because i get my hands on those dogs and i notice things that people people just don't get their hands on their dogs often enough and um so they don't catch things ahead of time and i, I like being able to do that for people that can't really do both <laughs> so amen well and, and that's kind of the frustrating thing too with some of your grooming clients, you were saying that they're like, well, you said this is what we should do. So and, and they didn't seem to think there was anything else to do. They're having a hard time hearing that you did have other options. So how do you think we can help help pet parents know that, yeah, there really is other stuff you can do? Yeah, I think it's just getting out there and having those conversations. It's, it's hard to kind of draw people in. You know, it's easier if they're seeking out another way and they find you and then they're all excited about it. But if you're trying to talk them into it, it's it's harder. Um, but just simple things like I. Um, I know that a lot of dogs get on allergy medicine and people spend a fortune going monthly to get an injection or they're using the, the pills every day and um, and I just like being able to explain to them that those pills seem like they're working, but they're actually just stopping the itch. So they're, they're working, but they're not getting the problem fixed. And, you know, you can keep going down this road or you can try something else. And, um, you know, it's, it's when people's eyes open and they're like, oh, well, I have been feeding this food since they were a puppy and I've never changed it because, you know, they're fine. And I think, <laughs> oh, are they fine? Because, you know, they itch like crazy it, or whatever the case may be. You know, it's just an easy example. But um, yeah, it's just it's just conversations and letting people know that they don't. And also when they go to the vet, they don't have to take that prescription. They, if it's not life threatening, obviously, that you know, if something serious is going on and this is going to keep them alive, take the medication um, or whatever. But in the meantime, look at other ways and and see if there's an alternative. Um, or if you need a few days to step back, they can write that prescription and you can pick it up 
another day. Just right on, right on. Let, let them know that there are options. Exactly. And the thing is, too, is that what veterinarians are not doing such a great job at is telling you that, oh, by the way, the um, that Apoquil tablet that your dog's taking every month, it's been uh, black boxed by the FDA because it's been associated with increased cases of cancer. So we're supposed to be doing something called informed consent, meaning we explain to you the risks as well as the benefits of the potential medication. But I think what's not happening is that the risks are not being well explained and, and the medications are being used inappropriately. So for instance, Apoquil, it says clearly on the label, do not use in dogs under two. Well, I know there's lots of vets that are starting pups at six months mm -hmm. of age on this stuff. And I had a, a friend whose dog had started on it. She was a Labrador in Charleston, South Carolina. She just had the normal lab itch um, and started her on Apoquel at two. And at four, she had systemic mast cell cancer because of this medication. So it just, it's so awful that this is what's happening. And the other deal too is that you know veterinary medicine it's like when i started doing the original crock pet diet in 2006 i was scared to death because it's like sacrilege uh to suggest that real food and uh, things that come out of your refrigerator could be useful to actually feed your pet but what i saw was incontrovertible evidence that this was the way to go so you know it's just like you know, it's like Lisa saying that, you know, there are, are lots of sources out there, but most people like Susan Thixton Sepp's website, but most people don't realize that there are options until they're faced with a really serious problem. And that's kind of human nature, right? We don't really want to prevent disease. We're, we're trained to react to it instead of actually taking steps to prevent it. So having said that, what would, you, what would your top five and I'm going to grab because she's like back. What would your top five prevention techniques be for any dog or cat? Five. Um, one, two. Eh, one, yeah. two. We'll start with the one. It'll roll into some others. Well, I, I probably will. I'll keep going. Um, so st starting with fresh food, even just adding um, food toppers to your regular dog food, just starting there. Um, I don't know if this counts because I, I've gotten to know this Chinese medicine aspect um, through this program and uh, sometimes switching the protein that the dogs are eating, even if it's from one kibble to another, switch from chicken to beef or whatever the appropriate one would be. Um, that's been a simple change that I've helped people make too. Um, but throwing additional vegetable on top, additional real meat, like go ahead and cook up some ground beef or, or duck or whatever you can get your hands on and um, throw it on top. Take, take a little bit of that, the, the kibble out and put in the fresh stuff. Um, I have had people add fish oil to what they're doing. Um, to help bring down inflammation, because I think chronic inflammation is something that people don't know is prominent in all dogs and a lot of people too. I, I learned that about myself. I thought I was on the arthritis train. I'm, I was going downhill. I got arthritis in my knees and my back. No, I cut out vegetable oils and that pain went away. You know, that was just one thing that I did. And and there's a number of different ways that you can bring down inflammation. So that one's huge. Um, and I've also learned a lot about the connection between the gut and the liver. So I'm a huge proponent, proponent of like a little liver detox just to clear out the gunk, especially when your dog is on a medication for a lifetime they're processing a lot of stuff. And so help help clean that out a little bit and things, other things start to work a little better in the meantime. Right on. Um, so those, those are a couple of kind of 
sure things. Um, and then you can always work from there. Start with those things and then you realize, oh, I can now try this and everything just works better. Even medications work better when the body's working Body right. Can, exactly, exactly. And and that's exactly it. So, right, there's there's like, oh, you must feed all raw or, oh, I'm going, I can, I'm, we're going to say, oh, feed the crock pet diet. But you can do it in small steps because yeah. if you're not used to, getting the time together to cook for your pets or make the food or what have you, like Maggie was saying, just start with some fresh vegetables or some frozen vegetables even, and throw that on top of the food and see what happens. Um, add in a little real meat. So you're not feeding the processed scary stuff that we have no idea what it actually is or where it actually came from and start to see what happens with your dog or your cat. Uh, and I think what will happen in your own mind is you'll start to see the changes and realize the difference that that makes. And it, you know, you just got to figure out what you can do on a consistent basis to help, help your pups out, help your kitties out too. Um, and so with your, you've had success with your own pets. And I know with the folks you were working with for your exam, um, they had some pretty interesting changes too. Can you talk a little bit about what they were, what they were experiencing? Um, well, I did have, this is, um, I have a couple of grooming clients that are kind of working. I, I'm going at their pace, <laughs> what they're willing to do. And um, there is one, one girl who really went all in with cooking the meals, but her dogs are on Apoquil. And, um, but, but one of them, they're both two little Yorkies and one of them every single day would vomit after she ate her breakfast. Not immediately, but everybody went to work, they came home, Zoe puked. It was just to be expected. Um, and they started cooking her food and that stopped happening. So that was a win. Uh, she has tried to pull the Apoquil dose down just to see what happens. And it's not quite been successful yet, but I also told her, you know, the next thing is to do a sensitivity test, find out what foods and environmental allergens or anything that might be irritating these dogs year round, because that's the thing too. It's not just seasonal. Um, and now that summer has hit, it started getting so much worse. She said, okay, I'm going to do it. You know, I, I just sat back and waited, like, please do this test because it'll help. It'll just give you a, a roadmap to start with, you know, see if there's anything that we're giving them that you could cut out. And it took some time, but she's finally doing it. Um, so we're still kind of in the middle of that. Um, and I also have a woman who has a great Dane and a golden retriever and refuses to cook because it's just way too much. And, I get it. I have three little dogs that equal about 50 pounds total. <laughs> so right on. she's, she's dealing with a lot more appetite there. Um, and she's taking the baby steps. She's doing the vegetables. Um, the dog started to get skinny. And so we played with the amounts and also tried adding in olive oil or avocado oil just to get those calories back into them. And things like that. And she recently added fish oil and it's been two weeks and the great Dane, his skin is just huge improvement. It's not there yet. He's still a little bit flaky, but it was that simple. I think we had to get him eating real food first, get, just get some of those nutrients in. And I also got her to start the milk thistle. You know, these are the basic starting steps and, um, and it's, this one I'm I'm kind of getting a visual representation of that it's working. You know, that's, the, the that is insane. So literally for, for this great Dane, all she had to do was add in fresh or frozen vegetables and some fish oil and the And I think started. it is frozen. I think they are frozen vegetables. I, I found that out a few weeks ago that she's just getting different whatever she and can find in the freezer section. That's amazing. And so basically it's like, all right, this is on sale this week and it goes in the grocery cart and then it goes in the dog's bowls. And that's made a massive difference for this dog. 
Yeah. That's yeah, and ridiculous, he's, he's right? Great, great shape. And he, and that was another one that didn't have any follow-up. He had a year ago elevated liver enzymes and was told to take denimerin and see you later. And um, so now that year is almost up. And fortunately, I've gotten to intervene. Who knows? If, if they had redone the blood work three months ago, maybe things had changed already. But we're going to see in August if that number has come down and if they can stop the denimerin because we're doing milk thistle instead and which actually probably works where the denimerin doesn't right on <laughs> you can say that i don't know yeah. now that's what it, that's what i saw over the years and and lisa yeah. yeah so bobby is the you know the the uh i think dr becker and rodney habib did a big celebration about his life but this is the interesting thing to me this dog is not eating raw food he's eating mostly fruits and vegetables that are grown locally at the farm which is and whatever the, their family cooks for dinner or breakfast exactly or lunch. yeah they and cook yeah their meals exactly lots of potatoes lots of probably pasta rice whatever is going on but it's not like boatloads of meat so i mean i think raw food right. can be extremely helpful for many many um patients but uh but just a more uh, sort of balanced approach in terms of fat, protein, carbohydrates is is the way to go. And quite frankly, that's where we're going to make a bigger impact on the environment. So if dogs and cats are already eating 30%, 25 to 30% of the conventionally produced animal proteins in the US, putting more dogs and cats on raw food is not sustainable environmentally and then you know and that's part of why they're eating the garbage uh, parts of the animal uh, proteins in pet food because that's what's cheap and easy and left over yeah and that's that's uh, I, lo I love Susan Thixton because she's a no bullshit kind of woman um, right on. and she she brings that to people's attention and and even AFCO it food isn't in the, that acronym, it's feed. And it is that rendered stuff that's not fit for human consumption that goes into the dog food. And gosh, labels are so misleading. It's so frustrating that. Oh man, I mean, it's ludicrous. Thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty smart most of the days. And I took a, a natural animal nutrition course through College for Integrative Veterinary Therapeutics the way pet food labels are set up are incomprehensible and unintelligible. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're dosing vitamins and minerals based on the number of calories. We're dosing it based on a thousand kilocalories instead of what the dog needs. And part of that. So for instance, one of, one of you, your fellow uh, coaches in training was asking what, what's all this copper storage disease uh, stuff going on in the liver? Well, it turns out when we started using better absorbable copper, um, this disease started showing up in spades in dogs that are not genetically predisposed to it. And so what there's no flexibility in your ability to, to dose vitamins and minerals. So, and that's the other thing. I think a lot of pets are chronically underdosed with minerals and vitamins because if they ate the volume of food that the label says, they'd be, you know, all ginormous, you know, just terribly obese. And so that's a huge problem as well. I think we have a huge undernourished population of pets um, as, and they're often obese at the same time, which really stinks. So for those of you jumping in, if you've got questions about your own pets, drop them in here. But and and I don't mean to uh, to cut you off, Maggie. But mm -mm. yeah, so I mean that's kind of the that's kind of the deal. Is like, what are we actually doing with food here for these? Yeah, and I I just heard recently that um, those pet food bags, um, the feeding instructions are are kind of standard for an active dog, and you know. We would love to know that all dogs are super active and they're outside running around for hours a day, but that's just not the truth. And mm -hmm. when they start to get 
chubby, they cut back the food. So therefore they're cutting back the minerals and vitamins. Like it's now they're not being nourished because they're not eating the same amount just to cut back the calories. They're not getting enough vitamins and nutrients. So it's very complicated. Um, it is. It, and it's kibble, kibble is supposed to be so convenient. That's, I guess that's what I'm thinking that it's actually not, <laughs> it's not as convenient as you think it is. Exactly. And, and to your question, Faith, that's exactly the problem. You're given a little kibble and, and it's hard to know, like you think you're buying a really good bag of food and maybe you are, maybe you aren't. It's tough. Um, it doesn't mean anything. And, and sadly, it may not because of the way AFCO is able to get away with labeling. Um, but, you know, you're cooking turkey, sweet potato, green beans, carrots, and peas. The thing I'd encourage you to think about is how much carbohydrate is already in the bag of food. And then what you're listing here, too, with the sweet potato uh, and peas, those are also carbohydrate sources. And that's, I think, one of the other issues is if our pets get, get overweight, we cut the volume of food back. We've, and we've, we've been feeding a very high carbohydrate brand of food, then we have a very low protein diet, which is going to make them lose muscle and inappropriate amounts of fats, which is going to make their skin get cruddy. So, and ha have you seen this with your, with your, your clients too, Maggie, where they're like trying to figure out what to do and, and the dog just doesn't look good. Yes. And um, also that they'll, you know, see the, the fresh food option in the grocery store and they'll go for that because the dry food is giving them issues and it doesn't really change anything. Um, but and, and that's and the other trouble with those labels is the picture on the front is beautiful and show all the vegetables and all the meat. Um, and one thing that I really like to point out to people is everything listed after salt on the, on the ingredients. There's only 1% or less in that. And it's usually mostly the synthetic vitamins and minerals that are added to balance everything. But if you look at it, there's the blueberries, there's the carrots, and there's the celery. Oh, so what's above salt? The meat and potatoes. And, and the corn. <laughs> and the corn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. And, the, and the, I mean, and that's, that's a huge problem. And so that's it. I mean, Faith, if that's something you need help with, um, that's part of what Maggie has been trained to do is to help you get a diet that is designed exactly uh, for the needs of your individual dog. And that way you can get everything balanced out. Yeah, and that's the thing too, with, even with the, the vegetables that Faith is using, um, you can rotate in more, you can use those, but you can add things, you know, I'll do sweet potato with these other things that are um, lower in co carbohydrate, today and then tomorrow we'll do green beans and something else and so you keep that load down even if you are still adding the kibble in there are things there are combinations that you can put together that'll give them everything they need exactly exactly and variety is the spice of life so um it's just insane like when when i was feed, we had five dogs and five cats we were cooking for at one point and so when we had veggies that were starting to go a little sideways, um, that's what we would do is just throw them in the freezer. And then that went in the ne next bad batch of food for these guys. So, you know, right. feel free yeah, to add things in. Um, oh, God. OK, so you, Lisa, you're the person that's been working uh, with Wilma. Um, and and I'm sorry, I can't quite read everything down here. So let me pull this off a second. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, would, would this possibly be PL, uh, protein losing enteropathy? Yes. And, or several other things, but um, yes, we're going to treat them the same way holistically in terms of getting at the root cause 
And I think that's part of what Wilma is trying to work with you about is to, to do some testing to figure out what is going to be appropriate as far as not creating allergic response. And also uh, you've got a situation where you've got to use a little bit lower fat, I think. Um, but that's exactly what one was trying to do is get the gut to heal and seal um, and then get add in supplements that will again help to seal, uh, adsorb some of the yuck that's getting produced because of the yucky um, inflammation that's going on secondary to all this GI stuff. And I mean, poor sweetie. So you've got GI stuff and then a ruptured tendon in your leg. So you're just, you're both not having fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is going to be a process. And that's the other thing to remember is that your dog didn't develop all of these GI symptoms overnight. And so this may be 18 months or two years process getting things back on track. And the difficulty is just to keep breathing and uh, keep going and be willing to continue to experiment. Uh, does that make sense to you, Maggie? Yeah, pa patience is really key um, too. I, I always liken it to the, the bad relationship that you finally got out of. That, <laughs> you know, the dog's been sick for so many years. You've been with this toxic person for so many years and it takes what, as many years as you were together, takes that many months to recover kind of thing. It's silly, but it, but it's just to say that, you know, if your dog's been struggling for a long time and you're, you're getting on the right track, it's not going to happen overnight because it didn't, it didn't get bad overnight, you know? So yeah, it, patience is really, and, and a lot of people give up because it's not working after a couple of weeks and you got, you got to just stick it out. It is. And it's, it's a pain. Uh, I, you know, I, it just is. So, and so Faith is asking about yogurt and I think, yeah, that's a great treat and it does provide some probiotic organisms. So that's not a bad idea. Um, adding in fermented foods are great. I think dogs are probably not going to be too excited about sauerkraut, but there's probably a Labrador out there that will be. Or if they tolerate the um, yogurt just fine, you can try kefir which mm -hmm. is usually in the same aisle um, and right that's on. a fermented food. Yeah. So that's a great option. And then adding a probiotic supplement. Um, so if there's, there's a couple we've been using um, that are uh, sporulated probiotics. And so they really um, are good at surviving the digestive process and getting in and doing the job they're supposed to do. But it's amazing. We'll, We'll see dogs that have been on different probiotics for years, but we add in this and then boom, they have a reaction. Um, so, that, and then boom, they're starting to get better quickly. And that's crazy. So that's wonderful. If your dogs love sauerkraut right on, um, keep them, keep them going. Yeah. But yeah, but Lisa, this is interesting too. So, you know, this is not unreasonable to start with but then other things never got added in. And that's what Maggie was saying earlier. You know, you started a year ago on something, um, but nothing ever got adjusted. And that's, that's the advantage of working with a coach is that you can talk with them every two weeks, every month. And like, wow, this is amazing. Or mm, this didn't work so well. <laughs> what do we do now? And then pivot. Yeah. And that's, that's the nice thing about building up a relationship and working together for several weeks. You know, I, I would offer a consultation and you won't, you won't leave empty handed if that's all that you do and you don't pass that one consultation and choose not to work for further. Um, I won't leave you empty handed with that, but if you go with the six week kind of plan, then you get those regular check-ins and you can, make sure that you're doing everything right. And if something's going wrong, we can fix it. You know, you're not just kind of left on your own and you, you don't want to go to a vet every two weeks. You'd rather just have a quick phone call. Right. So yeah, right on. And if you so, do need to go to the vet, I can help you with that too. 
you know. Right on. So how does that actually, so how does that work? I mean, so if somebody decides to work with you, what happens? What's the process? Yeah. Um, well, with, with the consultation, I, I've got the full questionnaire that you'll give me a lot of information about your dog and then we'll talk um, through Zoom. So it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter where I live. Um, we can do a consultation from anywhere, talk for 45 minutes. I will have more questions for you probably, um, but I will also just let you talk uh, and I'll just hear everything that's going on with your dog and what you're struggling with. And, um, you know, I can offer options and I can, if that's where you want to stop just with our conversation, then I'll throw out some foods that you should feed or foods that you should avoid and maybe a couple of products that might be helpful and that'll be that. But I have kind of packages set up too. So if you have a dog that's been diagnosed with allergies and is on that Epiquil for life, um, we'll do a sensitivity test and see if there are food, foods or environmental problems that are just irritating them further. Um, and we can customize that diet. And um, even, even if there's like a pollen issue, I can tell you to wash your dog's feet when you come in or something, you know, it's, it's, across the board, whatever the thing says, we can, we can give things a try. Um, and I'll give you recipes that way. That's, that's the other thing with the consultation, just, you know, basic information. But if you, if we work together, I will set up recipes for you that you can rotate and, um, and start cooking for your dog to see what that feels like. And then we check in, in a couple of weeks. And, um, if you're really struggling with something, we'll, change it up and try to make it easier. Cause that's really what I like is easy is better. And, and that's something that I've gotten myself narrowed down to with my own dogs. I used to have 10 different things that I would rotate into their routine and I didn't need all of them. And so now I've got it down to their, their diet. All three dogs eat the same thing. And I supplement with each individual dog, what their what supports their needs. So, right on. Um, and so that's the allergy and, and there's other options too. Like there might just be a healthy dog who wants to get on some cooked food. Their pet parent wants to start cooking for them. I can work with that. And that's right. a shorter program. That's a month or, you know, whatever. So. Right on. So, if you want to get in touch with Maggie, here's the link to her Facebook page. You can reach out there, message her, get going. If this is something, and, and Lisa, thanks for this, because I think this is a way for, if you've got nobody in your area that's supporting you, this is a way that you can get support. And um, I want to talk a little bit about the program so you know what this is and you understand the degree of training that Maggie and the other coaches have gone through. But part of what we're doing is we're not teaching you to be a veterinarian by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm doing is teaching people the basics of uh, functional medicine, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, and the concepts that get used in conventional veterinary medicine so you can understand what goes on. Also in the program, there are 16 uh, weekly modules or 14 modules with two break weeks, so to speak. Um, and during those times, you'll have a coaching call each week with me. And then you also have a mentor available through the program. And so you have available to you a weekly call with your mentor. That person will be grading your homework and also um, part of the graduation requirement is to do two actual coaching sessions with real clients so that you can show us, yeah, I know this material. I know how to help pets with this. And also um, during the program, part of what we'll teach you is how to launch an online business, how to market yourself and, uh, and then help you understand how to set that up. But it's an extremely comprehensive program. We're covering almost 
all of the really serious health issues um, that you will be presented with. And then the coaching calls go on from the program, during the program, and also for our graduated coaches. So it's not an inexpensive program, but I think it's very, very in-depth. And the level of service that we provide with the mentors, I think it's quite worth the investment. So it's been a, uh, a joy to do this program and to help people learn how to help others. But it's uh, it's just been amazing watching our coaches grow, watching them learn and watching them help people. So if this is at all interesting to you, I would, I'm going to drop another link in here uh, where you can drop us your email and your phone number, and we'll get in touch with you about going further. But Maggie, when you were in the program, I know that you were struggling with the material to start with, but how, how did that end up going? It, it's really, it seems like a lot when you don't have that kind of um, background where you don't know the physiology of how the body works completely. Um, but you come out with so much knowledge. And during the course, you're not just on your own. And that's that's what Dr. Roberts was saying about the mentor calls and the weekly coaching calls with, with her. You know, you're not left on your own. If you have a question, you ask it. And you've got several people who can help you get through or, or move forward. And um, if you're stuck, you're not going to be stuck for long because these people are here to help. It, we're all there to help each other at this point. Um, and a lot of it, yeah, I didn't ask for help when I might have needed it, but <laughs> I I made it through on my own. And um, I just feel like I've, I've accomplished so much and I haven't even started. And that's the thing, too, uh, that it doesn't stop there. You know, it's a 16 week course, but then you still get to see Dr. Ruth every week and ask questions about the clients that you're working with and your mentors don't go away. They're still they're still there. You don't get to talk to them regularly, but, you know, you build that relationship and they're still there to answer questions if you need. Um, so it's it's ongoing. And that's what I love that anything if anything were to change about the course, we're still, we're still a part of it. Right. You know, it's not 16 weeks and done. That's it. Because ultimately if, if I'm not helping you all be successful, then this program won't succeed. And it is so critical that it succeeds right now. So Lisa, we, we were talking about your pup a few weeks ago. So get back in touch with uh, Wilma. She's got some more options for you. Any parting comments you want to add Maggie? I don't know. I, I just, I just really hope that, um, videos like this one, interviews like this one are going to get passed around and more people are going to see that you, you don't know what you don't know. And once you start to learn a few things and try a few things, that's, that's the big part. Like start finding out what your dog's favorite vegetables are, you know, just offer them it's just a place to start. And, and it was, it kind of came up briefly that you need that, that gut to heal. So the very first step is adding fresh food and letting the body get nutrients that it needs to heal. And once you, once you do that, you're going to start to see changes. And, and once you see changes, you want more changes <laughs> and it, it gets fun after that it's enough it's not a hassle it's not a i know i'm a crazy person my world revolves around my dogs and their schedule and <laughs> their food and all that but it doesn't have to be you know they are my kids that's what i do and so i'm a little bit on the far end of things but it can be very easy it can work right into your own schedule it doesn't have to take a lot of time and if you're really hungry, you can add salt. <laughs> yeah. Just throw it on a little bit of rice and yeah, we've talked it's all about good. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So y'all 
keep asking questions. Um, and so Lisa, you know, wonder why my dog doesn't want to eat raw chicken liver because maybe it's just not appealing. And we, we end up, you know, the raw feeding movement, they're like, oh yeah, lots of liver. Well, the liver is the detoxifying agent and that's where all the yucky stuff is. So we use some, but we have to be careful with it. But the deal is, is keep asking questions, whether it's with, with us um, or with some another veterinarian, the more questions you ask, the more answers there are available to you. And you can start to figure out what makes sense for your pet and what does not make sense. And that's the other critical thing is that we, many times, my colleagues and I will present this like this is the approach to solving this particular problem. And if it doesn't work for your dog or your cat, it doesn't work for your dog or cat. And so you need to pivot and find another approach. So keep asking questions, y'all. That's the best way to go. This has been a ball. It has been fun because all of you all out there in Internet Landia are playing with us and asking questions and interacting. We love it. Um, stay tuned. We'll be doing more and more of these and uh, we'll see you soon.